Uh, thank you. Um, representing the High Latitude Time Domain Survey uh, Definition Committee. Um, so I'll give you uh, a brief overview of what this uh, survey is about. Um, give a, uh, a sense of um, uh, the kinds of observations that we're planning to do and the sciences that we're uh, hoping to do uh, and some of the variations that we are planning to, we are studying and plan planning to study in the next uh, several months. Um, I'm Masao Sako, I'm from the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, this is the uh, committee uh, members. Uh, Brad Senko and I are, do I point the, yeah. Okay, uh, Brad Senko and I are the uh, co-chairs of this committee. Um, there are seven committee members uh, on this slide that are in this room or in somewhere in the vicinity, um, representing various uh, science expertise. We have uh, supernova uh, 1A cosmology experts, uh, core collapse supernova experts, AGN experts, uh, uh, spectroscopy, uh, data processing, and so forth. So we are uh, very well uh, represented. Um, if you want to talk to, uh, if you want uh, to uh, discuss any of your potential ideas, uh, concerns uh, that you might have about the high latitude time domain survey, look for one of us and we would be happy to uh, uh, talk to you. Um, okay, so we've received 23 uh, white papers uh, from a wide variety of um, uh, science topics. Uh, there were uh, white papers that discussed sort of the logistics of uh, field selection, survey strategy, and possible trade-off studies that you can do about imaging versus spectroscopy, various filter choices, um, fields uh, to observe, and so forth. Uh, we, of course, received many white papers on not just type 1A supernova cosmology, but other types of stellar explosions, including superluminous supernovae, uh, tidal disruption events, kilonova, pair instability, uh, supernovae, and uh, so forth. Uh, and also um, uh, white papers on uh, supermassive black holes, uh, AGN science that you can do with the, uh, uh, with the time domain uh, data. Um, there were also science pitches, uh, sorry, white papers on uh, deep galaxy surveys. The high latitude time domain survey, even though it's cadence, in the end you can co-add them and generate uh, very deep um, images and you can do a lot of interesting uh, galaxy evolution studies, search for high redshift uh, galaxies that JWST is finding, um, and so forth. Um, we've also received white papers on how to do photometric cloud uh, calibration. This is very important for this uh, particular survey uh, because type 1A supernovae is trying to do precision measurements of distances. Every 1% uh, that you're off in your flux calibration directly translates into something that's comparable in your distance measurements. So this is a very important uh, thing that we like to uh, um, uh, keep in mind. Uh, and also, um, um, last but not least, uh, various collaborations that we can have with the, uh, the Japanese uh, folks on using Subaru and Roman, maybe simultaneously, uh, to do uh, coordinated observations, but also complementing each other on spectroscopic capabilities and things that you can only do from space versus things you can do well from the, uh, from the ground. All right, so the main science goal for the High Latitude Time Domain Survey is Supernova 1A cosmology. Um, this is uh, the, the core uh, science. We have to do this. Uh, there are requirements, um, and that's what we're going to do. However, there are variations of the Supernova 1A cosmology survey that would be uh, beneficial for AGN science, core collapse supernova science, and so forth. So those are the, uh, uh, the kinds of um, uh, variations that we're exploring. Uh, can we do a supernova, uh, supernova 1A survey well, but also do these other sciences uh, ex exceptionally well um, also? Uh, so this slide shows uh, the state-of-the-art supernova cosmology as of uh, today. Uh, three different publications uh, published in the past couple of years. Uh, this one uh, on the top left, this is a Hubble diagram published by the Dark Energy Survey. Uh, collaboration uh, just early this year, um, and uh, we, I was part of this. Uh, we uh, published our uh, 1800 or so Type 1A supernovae, 
uh, put them on a Hubble diagram and combine them with the, uh, uh, the low redshift supernovae discovered by other people um, and, and did our best cosmology. Uh, the one on the bottom left, uh, published by David Rubin, somewhere in this room, he's right there. Um, <clears throat> uh, this was a compilation of uh, various surveys, uh, and he worked so hard to do the uh, cross-calibration, cross-photometric calibration, which, uh, like I said earlier, is a very important uh, thing to, uh, to get right. Um, this is the UDN3 sample of uh, 2,000 or so Type 1A supernovae. Uh, and on the right, I'm not showing a Hubble diagram, but I'm showing constraints uh, on uh, W naught and WA from the Pantheon Plus publication by Dylan Brout, uh, which consisted of about 1,500 supernovae. Many of the superno supernovae between this sample and this sample are the same, but the analysis uh, uh, methods and assumptions are uh, different. Um, and uh, Pantheon Plus, Union 3 and the dark energy survey of uh, results on W naught WA are actually remarkably very similar. Uh, contours uh, look like this. They're sort of shifted towards the bottom right compared to uh, a cosmological uh, constant. Um, this uh, contour over here is roughly what we, uh, or at least the size of the contours, are roughly what we sort of expect uh, Roman to be able to uh, do in, uh, in a few years. If you look at uh, this particular Hubble diagram, you can see where the deficits are uh, very clearly. Um, there are only uh, a small number of supernova 1As uh, spectroscopically uh, confirmed about uh, above a redshift of one. And this is precisely where Roman can shine uh, uh, due to its infrared ca uh, capabilities um, and, uh, and the wide area um, uh, focal plane. So this is uh, our main science goal for the high latitude uh, time domain survey. Uh, just to give you a sense of the, uh, the boundary conditions, um, we are uh, planning to use six months of observing time over a two year duration. So using 25% of the observing time over two years uh, uh, observing uh, the, uh, the survey areas for this uh, survey, high latitude uh, time domain survey. Uh, those areas must be in a continuous viewing zone. We don't want interruptions uh, because uh, those gaps in light curves uh, will reduce the number of useful uh, supernova. And so we're limited to sort of these uh, areas uh, in the uh, ecliptic uh, poles up here uh, and down here. And we, of course, would like to have low galactic extinction so that, uh, you know, things are not in our way. Um, and uh, the survey will consist of both imaging uh, using some combination of these uh, filters uh, that we also saw earlier, uh, and also spectroscopy using the, uh, the PRISM uh, instrument. Um, this is one possible variation of a, a tiling strategy of how we might cover uh, uh, one or you know, more of our fields. Uh, each one of this, uh, these is a, uh, a, a Roman uh, focal plane. In this particular uh, rendition, we will start here uh, scan up, shift, go down, up, and then five days later uh, the telescope will, will be rotated because uh, the Earth uh, is rotating around the sun, and then we would do this every five days and, uh, and cover a contiguous uh, area. Uh, depending on the survey strategy, we might have a smaller deep field that is embedded inside a larger uh, wide field that will get uh, lower um, exposure times. Um, this is a, a slide that I stole from uh, Rebecca Hounsel, and the numbers are from uh, Ben Rose in his uh, publication. So this is, uh, I just wanted to show you one particular um, survey strategy so that you kind of have a sense of what is uh, capable and what variations are possible and what the trade-offs are. Uh, so this is what we call, I guess it's one of the supernova reference surveys. Uh, um, it's a reference survey that consists of uh, in this, this case, using 75% of the observing time on imaging and the remaining 25% on uh, sc uh, spectroscopy. So the first two rows summarize the uh, imaging observations and the bottom uh, two rows summarize the spectroscopic observations. In this reference survey, we have a wide tier and a deep tier that have different 
filter choices. So the wide uh, uh, survey will have the uh, bluer filters, four of the uh, bluer filters, and the uh, deeper one will have uh, uh, two filters that are shifted to the uh, red. And the target redshifts for the type 1a supernovae are redshift 1 for the wide and 1.7 for, uh, for the deep. And if you use these exposure times, these are the single exposure limiting magnitudes that you will get uh, per visit, where each visit here is defined to be a 30 hour, a contiguous 30 hour uh, observation visit. Um, and we do this every five days. So that accounts for the 25% uh, of the uh, observing uh, time. Um, so if you do something like this, uh, you will be able to cover about 19 square degrees with the wide and four square degrees with the, uh, with the deep and uh, end up with 9,000 and 3,500 type 1a supernovae for a total of 12,000 or so uh, 1as over two years. So this is with the 75% uh, observing for the uh, imaging survey. Now the remaining 25% will be on spectroscopy with the, uh, the prism. Now, if you only use 25% of the time on spectroscopy, you can see here that we are not able to cover the entire imaging area on spectroscopy if you want a comparable depth for your uh, prison uh, exposure times. Um, so in this case, 25% spectroscopy will give you uh, 3.4 uh, square degrees, so a small fraction of the uh, wide area, and 1.1 uh, 1 square degrees, again, a small fraction of the deep area to get uh, only a fraction of supernovae with spectroscopy. <clears throat> um, but nevertheless, this is one um, rendition of the survey uh, that we uh, studied. Um, now, we also uh, considered the opposite scenario in which you would spend uh, only 25% of the observing time on imaging and 75% of the time on spectroscopy. And this combination of uh, imaging versus spectroscopy will actually allow us to cover the same amount of area in uh, imaging and spectroscopy. So uh, here in the imaging wide, five square degrees, imaging deep is 1.7 square degrees. You can do spectroscopy on the entire area. And so all of the 4,000 supernovae that we will find in the survey, this number is smaller, of course, because we're covering less area, uh, will have uh, spectroscopic observations. So this, these are sort of two data points that you can think of and we're studying variations of these, uh, of these surveys. Um, we've uh, divided our committee into subcommittees that are focusing on various trade-off studies. And the main one, like I uh, spent uh, the past five minutes on, is how much time should we spend on imaging versus uh, spectroscopy. This is something that we've been discussing for years and still haven't converged. But we are uh, making progress and uh, studying this uh, very carefully. Um, spectroscopy is necessary for supernova cosmology because you need the redshifts to measure one axis of the Hubble diagram. Now, you don't necessarily need redshifts of the transient. You can uh, go back and get redshifts of the host galaxies using either Roman, which will be harder, or use um, uh, ground resources like the Subaru uh, PFS. But you need redshifts to do uh, competitive supernova cosmology. Uh, you would also like to use uh, spectroscopy for class classifying the transients. Um, you can classify supernovae based on their light curves, but the uh, purity is not 100%. It's something like 96% or 97%. Um, is that good enough? Um, if we want to measure dark energy to 1%, is that good enough? Those are questions that we have to be uh, asking ourselves. Um, and then we would have to consider uh, other external resources that we might have. Again, uh, like I said, Subaru PFS uh, that might be able to do a lot of the spectroscopic observations that is hard to do from, um, from space. Um, we also have a subcommittee uh, studying the trade-offs between cadence, filter choices, exposure times. Um, of course, if, if, you, uh, if you lower your cadence, if you go from five days to 10 days, you can either um, increase your exposure time a factor of two or increase your area by a factor of two modulo the uh, um, overhead time. Uh, but those are the trade-offs that we are uh, considering at the, uh, at the moment. Um, we are also uh, informally discussing 
possible uh, synergies, coordination with other time domain surveys that, are, that would be running at that time. Uh, Rubin hopefully will go online in the next year or so. Euclid is already up there. Subaru and DCAM uh, in principle can be doing time domain surveys you know, tonight. Um, so it will be uh, good to discuss possible coordination with, with uh, other um, instruments uh, to maximize the uh, science output. Um, we're also discussing uh, strategies for how to get reference images um, to do image subtraction uh, to discover the uh, transients. You know, how, do, how do we do that? How much uh, exposure time do we need? Um, and, uh, and so forth. And a possible early pilot, uh, pilot survey so that we know exactly what the instrument capabilities are when we start the full uh, high latitude time domain survey. <clears throat> Um, this is the, uh, the timeline. We are, um, are investigating these various uh, topics. Uh, hopefully by the end of the month, we will communicate this back to the community uh, for further input and feedback and possibly uh, iterate. In a month or so, we would meet with the other uh, survey uh, definition committees, the Galactic Bulge and the uh, Wide Area Surveys. Uh, to discuss our preliminary uh, findings and status and, and so forth. Uh, and then uh, between August and September, we will do another iteration. Uh, and in October, communicate this back to the uh, community again, uh, ask for final input. And in November, hopefully, we'll have a, uh, a good uh, survey strategy that will meet the Supernova 1A uh, cosmology science, but also uh, other uh, ancillary science that will be possible. Um, okay, so let me just uh, put this up. Uh, these are the various uh, time domain survey related sessions that will happen in the next uh, day. Uh, there is a rapid uh, pit session tomorrow and a supernova pit session tomorrow. I believe both of these are open to everyone. Yes? Um, so that's tomorrow. And then Thursday, we have a joint uh, high latitude time domain survey and a wide uh, high latitude wide area survey committee. Uh, meeting to talk about uh, especially things like what are the deep uh, observations that the wide area survey people uh, would like and how the uh, time domain survey data can help. Um, we have uh, the time domain survey committee uh, on Thursday as well and a supernova pit simulation hack session on Thursday. Uh, so I'll end there. Thank you.